Good morning, everyone. Today's case is a Zen Ab Internal with Traction Suture. And I really want to spend time explaining why I like this technique. There's so many ways to do a Zen. Ab Interno, Ab Externo, and different modifications from each approach. So this is an Ab Interno, meaning we're going through a temporal incision to implant the Zen as close to the 12 o'clock position as possible. Um, I like this case because it can be completely sutureless is one reason. Here, right here, we're just tying the traction suture off. I'm doing a, a Q knot to help stabilize the uh, slippage of the suture so that when I place the traction, if one of the two uh, strands or threads of the suture don't uh, slip, slip at all, it'll still hold the other one, and uh, hence the Q knot. The mitomycin is being placed subconductively. Uh, this is about 40 micrograms of mitomycin on a patient who's been on three glaucomatrops for about 10 years. Um, this, this patient also has a history of a chronic angle closure glaucoma that was initially treated with cataract removal ECP laser after peripheral iridotomy. He did quite well with a mixed mechanism glaucoma for several years. Uh, he underwent a cahook dual blade goniotomy approximately six months ago and uh, really didn't restore the drainage canal from that chronic angle closure glaucoma as much as I'd hoped. So the next step is proceeding to a Zen to help improve his uh, intraocular pressure control. Here I'm making a 1.8 millimeter uh, metal keratone blade temporal incision angulated towards the uh, 12 o'clock position to help facilitate uh, placing the Zen here through this temporal incision. Uh, here you can tell the eye is on traction. I am placing my finger on the traction uh, suture to help more inferiorly uh, redirect the globe and get access to that 12 o'clock position. Here we're going through uh, the angle with the Zen. I am targeting the subconductival space uh, right below the conductival vessels. I have compressed the lidocaine mitomycin mix uh, to help reduce any uh, conductival edema to pass through the tenons is my approach here. Unfortunately, the video is just cutting off the tip, but right now the tip is placing the Zen in the subconductival space and it's being retracted. As soon as we, uh, I'm happy with the Zen being released, now I can come and remove my injector from the eye. Now we get to check our positioning of the Zen using the gonio prism and evaluating. It's hard to see here, but the Zen is a little bit short. Uh, there's more two to three millimeters in the subcon space, uh, two to three millimeters in the scleral tunnel, and really zero in the anterior chamber. So we're gonna go ahead and push the Zen back through the scleral tunnel a little bit here using the Fechner forceps and the transconductival manipulation and just adjust its, adjust its position. I'm going to recheck the position now and I see that it's actually two and a half millimeters in the anterior chamber, a little more than I'd even wanted. So I'm going to pull it back just a touch and get that uh, one millimeter in the anterior chamber, uh, two to three millimeters in the scleral tunnel and two to three millimeters in the subconscious space is exactly where I'd like uh, the Zen positioning to be. In the video, it's uh, really hard to see here, but we do achieve that one millimeter in the anterior chamber and a nice tunnel length. So I'm very happy with that repositioning and that went very, very well. Next, uh, I noticed the Zen was slightly curled in uh, some tenons and not quite as freely mobile as I'd like. So we're going to use the Grover spatula and do some primary needling just to free up uh, a nice lake of aqueous flow into the subcon space and allow that Zen to just move uh, freely. So doing some primary needling above the Zen and below the Zen here in the area where we also applied the mitomycin to help that long-term um, Zen result uh, be uh, intact. Just a comment here on who I think are good Zen candidates. 
Um, I actually like the older population, 70 and above with a poorly controlled open angle glaucoma, or in this case, a mixed uh, mechanism glaucoma, being that they scar down less. Uh, one of the chief concerns supposedly with the Zen compared to a glaucoma tube, for example, might be that um, fibrosis over time of the uh, conjunctival bleb. Here we're actually going to be forming the bleb, removing the uh, OVD, and watching that aqueous flow create a nice uh, subconjunctival flow. I found some uh, good Zen, Zen candidates to be those who are actually poor candidates for other procedures, such as patients with poor wound healing if they're on chronic chemotherapy, do quite well with the, with the Zen many times. Um, people with Crohn's disease, malabsorption, people that you would worry about sutras healing properly, here doing a sutraless procedure, a sutraless uh, filtration procedure, uh, they can do very well. Their zens will stay intact and risk of infection um, with no sutures and really no um, wounds beyond your temporal incision and your inferior incision is all you really have to uh, heal with. So the healing and post-operative course is often uh, quite comfortable for the patient and uh, enjoyable for the, for the physician. I also want to point out uh, what that traction suture did for us. So basically it uh, helped achieve like a third hand, uh, allowing the eye to be rotated inferiorly during the case. Um, it did this without any pressure on the eye, like the Vera hook. So there was no expression of the OBD from the anterior chamber, which really helped stabilize your chamber and rotate that eye inferiorly. Uh, it did rotate the eye into a cyclotorsion uh, allowing your surgical site to be uh, more nasal, trying to approach that 12 o'clock position, also facilitating an easier placement of your Zen. So I just want to emphasize those benefits, and I hope that uh, this technique is beneficial to your repertoire of glaucoma skills and procedures. Thank you very much.